We're opening our hearts. This is great. This is wonderful. Can you feel the energy? I can feel it. Bruce can feel it. You guys are feeling it? Not yet? Okay, we're getting there. Don't worry. Stay there. Hang in there. We're getting there. It takes some of us a little bit longer in the mornings to get going. <laughs> if you asked me at 6.30 this morning, I'd say, ah, what are you talking about? <laughs> but I, I have to tell you that it's just a matter of awareness. The truth is that everything in the universe is connected, that we are one, and that living in the truth of our oneness is going to be the only thing that really gets us in connection to who and what we truly are. It's going to make you happier than you ever thought imagined. It's going to bring you more peace than you ever imagined in your whole life. It's going to allow you to express your love in the world in the way that you've always wanted and receive all the love that you've ever needed. It's going to allow you and afford you the confidence to walk this earth as the light of the world, as a perfect expression of the divine, which is what you are. If it's what we are, how come we're not walking around like that? You are. Woohoo! I love that. Yay! So we opened our hearts. Last week was our open house, our open hearts, open house. And we opened our hearts to the truth of who we are. Now we want to take the next step and live in the truth of who we are. Live in the truth of oneness. When we open our hearts and our minds to the truth of who we are, an awareness of our reality in God emerges. The awareness of that oneness becomes our authentic experience. First, we have to become aware of it. Then we make it our authentic experience on a daily basis. It's no longer something that we're just hoping for. It's something we're actualizing, we're realizing. And this is the whole mission of Jesus the Christ. He realized his oneness with God. And that's what he attempted to show all of us. How to realize our own oneness with God. Eckhart Tolle. Yes, this is a spiritual center. We use people like Eckhart Tolle and Wayne Dyer and the Buddha and and Lao Tzu and whoever else we want to demonstrate the truth. Because finally the truth is one. We learned that last week too. The truth is one. There's only one truth expressed in many different ways. Expressed in your right and perfect way. The very first thing to note here is that it's a scientific fact that everything in the universe is connected. Whether it is the obvious physical connection, that our bodies need the air to breathe and the water to drink, that's a physical connection that's obvious. We need the air, we need the water, we need food, we need each other to live. That's an obvious physical connection. And then there's the more subtle connection of the waves of vibrating energy that connects everything. The waves of light and sound. And on a smaller level, it's vibrating strings of energy. It's not string theory, it's string reality. It's energy. Energy is real. It's the, it's the, at the, it's the smallest thing that we can possibly observe is strings of energy that connect everything. Vibration. And so the frequency of those vibrations determine your experience, right? It's it's simple. What I'm thinking, what I'm feeling, what I'm doing, how I'm vibrating, that's creating my world, the world that I experience around me. That's my authentic experience. So it's very possible that we can think and feel and vibrate in the truth of oneness. It's very possible, and we've all done it to a certain extent. We do it in our prayers, in our meditations, in our gatherings together, in our singing songs together. We experience it quite often. But to make it our authentic experience, 
all the time that we are divine, we must extend it. It has to be inclusive. We have to extend it to everyone. We have to open our hearts like we learned last week and extend it to our neighbors. That's how it increases in our awareness. Everything in the universe is intimately, intrinsically, and eternally dependent on everything else. Do you agree with that? Well, you're in the right place. (laughs) Because that's what we're teaching, and that's what we're attempting to create uh, an environment where we foster that experience. You're... Relationships should be an environment that fosters that experience of oneness. Your families should be an experience of oneness. Your spiritual centers certainly should be an experience of oneness, should be teaching oneness. Should be, should be, why should we be doing this? It's because it's where the absolute and the relative meet. And it shows you that separation is impossible. We cannot be separate from one another. Our separate ideas are meaningless. The universe is one. Or as the scripture would say, the Lord thy God is one. Nothing is separate and nothing can possibly exist by itself. One of my favorite teachers was uh, Archbishop, Archbishop Desmond Tutu, who taught Ubuntu. Ubuntu is the philosophy that you live in a way that acknowledges that I am not alone, that my life depends on you, that my life depends on everyone, that we are intrinsically, intimately, and eternally dependent on each other. I exist because of you. It's not just a a fancy philosophy that the Boston Celtics used to to win the 2008 championship. (laughs) Although many people never heard of Ubuntu before that. If you listen to Desmond Tutu at all, ever, or read the book Book of Joy, which is a wonderful book, uh, he talks a lot about Ubuntu. And all that really means is that we are one. Not just in the absolute, but here in the relative realm. Oneness is the place where all of that comes together. And this is an amazing, this is so huge for me because it's precisely this dedication to truth which is going to set us free from all the effects of separation. You know, we're constantly saying, how are we going to end this war in the Middle East? How are we going to stop the war in the Ukraine? How are we going to stop the division in our country? How are we going to stop the mass shootings in the United States? How are we going to this and that and everything else? All of those things are symptoms. And you can't attack the symptom without it coming back in some other form. We have to go to the cause. And the cause of every single one of the calamities of humankind is our false sense of separation from one another and from our source. When that source exists in you as much as it does in me, in the same amount and measure as it existed in Jesus the Christ or the Buddha or anyone else, you have that same divinity within you. And every single person has it. That completely takes away my temptation to judge the other person, to attack the other person, and to make the other person the cause of my upset or my problem. I have to get to the place where I have no problem. I am here now. I have arrived. Nothing to do, nowhere to go. I am complete, whole, free, abundant, magnificently aware of my divinity and connection with the entire universe. And anyone who comes into that energy field is going to experience the same thing. This is how you are asked to walk around the earth as the light of the world. It's not just a fancy thing that we say. It's a dedication to live in the truth, the truth of oneness. That's what sets us free from the effects of separation. I'm often reminded by A Course in Miracles to teach only love. Jesus in the Course in Miracles asks us to teach only love because that's what we are. 
I know we're going to be tempted to fall into the same patterns of thinking that have caused us pain. But when we're doing that and attempting to get vengeance or, or holding some kind of grievance or resentment in any way, we cannot be aware of our oneness and we cannot be the light of the world. We have to let those grievances go. And the best way that I've found is to experience myself as I was created, experience that divine nature within me. When I begin to do that, I can see it in you. I can share it with you because it's in you. It's there. You are that. You are that light. You are that love. You are that peace that I've been searching for. It's all right there. It's in you. We don't need to create an external place other than this. Even the Pope said there's no external place of heaven or hell. Hell is merely the experience of being separate from God. And heaven is the experience of being one with God. Oh my goodness. I may become a Catholic again. (laughs) That guy's pretty smart. (laughs) Heaven is the place of being one with God. Hell's the place where you think you're not one with God. It's pretty simple. But God being all that is, God, to me, being the totality of the experience or the reality of oneness, what we call in unity divine mind. What we heard from Charles Fillmore, co-founder of Unity last week, is divine mind is our only reality. All else is illusion. We don't have any other options, guys, but to love everyone. And the Bible says, love your neighbor as yourself. The, one of the things that we need to do first is love ourselves. We're all so deeply interconnected. We, we don't have any option, really, but to love everyone. That's our option. Why are we looking for other solutions? Why are we still thinking there'll be a, a military or a political or an economic solution Why are we still thinking that there'll be any relative or human solution available when all of that thinking comes from separation and separation is the problem? Our one option and our only solution is oneness because that is true. And it's true both in the eternal or absolute realm and in the relative realm. That's when they come together. And the whole purpose of spiritual living is to bring the eternal into your relative experience. To know you are a spiritual being having a human experience, you bring the spiritual into your experience of here and now. We've been trying to do it the other way for so long. Trying to understand the absolute from limited thinking. Turn it around. Affirm the absolute with your relative limited substance that you have. Affirm the absolute and the unlimited. And it will be reflected right here in this experience of being human. Remember the truth of oneness. is It's where all of this comes together. It's the point where we realize ultimately separation is impossible. Right here and right now I can decide to live in the truth of oneness. I want all of us to make this decision right here, right now individually, in your own heart and mind. I will live from this day forward, from this moment forward, in the truth of oneness. This is my dedication and my goal. I will live in the truth of oneness no matter what shows up in my life. I will live in the truth of oneness no matter what I witness going on out there. I will live in the truth of oneness no matter what the television tells me. I will live in the truth of oneness no matter how many times I'm tempted to believe in separate ideas and limited ideas. I will live in the truth of oneness. I am going to say no to separate thoughts. I'm going to say no 
to grievances and resentments. I'm going to say no to hate. When those thoughts come up within me, I cancel them. I see a big red circle around the thought and a line going through it. (laughs) Cancel. (laughs) I go to the computer of my brain and I say, delete. (laughs) Send that to the trash bin. Delete forever, yes. And you know, when you're in the computer, you're sharing files in Dropbox, it says delete for everyone. And you're really scared to delete for, yes, delete for everyone. <laughs> the ideas of separation and hate, delete for everyone. Just know that that's what you're doing. It's that powerful. What you're choosing for yourself, you are choosing for everyone. It's just a matter of time in that sense when the individual mind will accept its oneness. Your job is to accept it right here, right now, today, in this moment. You have arrived at the place of oneness. You have arrived at the experience, the authentic experience of oneness. The Bible tells us, remember, we are one spirit. Okay, we're one spirit, and we've been baptized or brought into life. We've been given the life force and brought into life. We've been baptized into what? One body, Ubuntu. We share the same body, right? The relative realm is also one. It's also connected. We're sharing the earth. We're sharing the air. We're sharing the water. We share one physical body. The atoms that were in my body yesterday are now in yours, They're always moving. When you breathe in, what do you, Deepak Chopra, right? You breathe in 10 to the power of 22 atoms. When you breathe out, there goes some more atoms. Where did they go? All right. (laughs) Isn't that incredible? It's all the same, all the same atoms. The atoms from Jesus Christ, the atoms from Buddha, the atoms from the dinosaurs. They're all right here, right now. It's just flowing around, interchangeable. You're the one that shapes it into the substance that is going to fit the, the, or resonate with the vibration that you have. It's going to manifest your intention through vibration. What is the intention of your heart? Is your intention to love and live in the truth of oneness? Because we are all one spirit. We've been baptized into this one body. And it doesn't matter what our situation is in the world. We've all been made to drink of that one spirit. Which means the same spiritual energy, life force, flows through me and you. The same energy. We share it. You can't hold it for yourself. Isn't that incredible? You can't. It's impossible. It's like the sound. It's like the light. You turn on the light, it lights up the whole room for everyone to see. When when there's music, everyone hears the music, whether they like it or not. Whether it's pleasant or not. I almost almost bought a t-shirt that says, just because I can't sing doesn't mean I won't. (laughs) Everybody's going to hear that sound. You can't stop it. That sound is coming out whether you like it or not. So that scripture is telling us that everything is one, even in the physical. The the eternal or the absolute and the relative come together in the truth of oneness. So I love this. This is Rumi says, Why struggle to open this door between us when the whole wall is an illusion? (laughs) There's nothing between us. There's nothing between us. It's not a struggle. We don't have to work at it. I remember after about the 199th workshop that I did about relationships, I finally gave up and and my perfect relationship showed up because I wasn't trying to make it happen. It's right there. You know why? It's within you. And when you stop trying to make it happen, you realize it's right here, right now. The perfect relationship is with myself. It's God within me. All the reflections 
of that perfect self will start to gather around you. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. So the whole wall is an illusion. I almost called this talk the confusion of illusion. (laughs) Now the reason we get confused is because we seem to perceive separateness, separate bodies, separate ideas, separate thoughts, separate places to live, separate, separate, separate. And everything is one. So there's the confusion. We are perceiving separately. The Course in Miracles has been amazing in my life because it taught me to perceive with the Holy Spirit, which perceives only oneness. I love that. To perceive oneness in the face of this seeming separation brings the absolute and the relative together. Now I can experience myself as one with you. We're no longer separate. We love to sing, I am light. There is only love. But how often and how deeply do we actually dedicate ourselves to the possibility that it could be true? All you have to do is entertain the possibility and it becomes a reality. If it's possible, it's that you're saying it's true now somewhere. That's why we said, I have arrived. If it's true somewhere, that somewhere has to be here. I say this all the time, but I'm going to say it for the sake of our guests. A human being searching for God is like a fish searching for the water. You're in it. You're swimming in it. God is all around you. It's what you are. It's your source of life. You breathe it in. You breathe it out. You don't need to search for it. And you're not going to tell the water what it is. Well, I'm going to define the water. You don't have to. You don't have to define God. You don't have to define the scriptures for me. That's why I don't do a lot of defining scripture. But you do have to live it. That's the fifth principle of unity, is living the truth that we know. So wherever you are in your spiritual path and whatever truth you know, all I ask you to do is take the time to live it. Take the time to say yes to yourself. This is what I believe, and I'm going to live this way. If you believe that love is the only answer, then live as if love is the only answer. If you believe that hatred is okay sometimes and that you can have grievances and resentments, then go ahead and do that. See how it works for you. I would rather check in with myself deeply right now. What do I actually believe deep in my heart and live that way? That's the fifth principle of unity is living the truth that we know. It's no longer simply an enlightened concept. We're living in the coherence of absolute truth. When we do that, we live in the coherence of that absolute truth within us right here and now. It becomes our authentic experience. No longer a concept or spiritual idea or teaching. It becomes our reality, our authentic experience right here And right now, in the absolute and in the relative, that's where time meets eternity. We say, in earth as it is in heaven. Pretty powerful statement. Or as above, so below. As within, so without. As the universe, so be the soul. We've heard these wonderful statements of truth so many times. Spoken in so many ways. And I would say that there will be no better time than today, right now, to live this fifth principle of unity. Make the commitment to live the truth that we know. This is the ultimate answer to every problem, to every question, to every manifestation of separation that you can imagine. To live completely passionately and authentically in the truth of oneness. I know you can do it because you got a lot of help. We love you guys. Thank you. 
You have been watching the message from our Sunday celebration service here at Unity on Cape Cod, providing a positive path for spiritual living. Please join us every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. at 147 Walton Ave, Hyannis, Mass., and visit us online at unityoncapecod.org. This video was made possible in part through a grant from Unity Worldwide Ministries and the Templeton Foundation.